Gold Trader Training Series, Measuring Trading Performance, Session 1. Why measure trading? Well, it's all about choices, really. The choice to succeed or not to succeed is based to a large degree, when we look at successful traders, on how well or otherwise they measure. For effective measurement can give you increased confidence that makes trading discipline easier. If we look at the relationship between discipline and confidence, it is absolute. If you're not confident in what you're doing, you're less likely to be disciplined. If you become more confident in your plan, you're more likely to follow it. That confidence comes from measurement and knowing that there is potentially going to be some results that are sustainable. Effective measurement can give you the ability to make considered decisions about possibly changing your plan and processes to improve your outcomes. And with that comes an emotional calmness to enable better decision making. All of these together start to create this belief that you could use trading to generate some revenue for you for a lifetime and meet your steady trading purpose and objectives. So moving you from hope to realistic expectancy and then using that expectancy based on evidence to start to scale your trading up. This is where most traders should be if they are going to be the trader that fulfills their potential. And yet most traders don't measure anything beyond the profit loss of any single trade and their overall account balance. And so if you don't do this because it is all about choices and don't have effective measurement in place, this will decrease your confidence, make a discipline trading more difficult, will mean that you have an ability to make decisions on real evidence. So most changes to your plan and processes that potentially could improve trading outcomes are based on whim rather than something that's real. It means that rather than having that emotional calmness, you're more likely to be driven emotionally by decisions in the market, which is never a great place to be. And you have a hope, not a realistic expectancy, that you can do this for a lifetime because you have no evidence to suggest that you are moving in the right direction. And of course, little guidance about when and how to scale your trading. So you have a choice. Which trader would you like to be? the ineffective or ineffective measurer, which is more likely to take you to where you want to be as a trader. Now, we're going to revisit this later, but this is the process for development of your trading system. We develop a specific and ambiguous plan, and why I'm saying specific and ambiguous is means that you can be consistent, and being consistent means you're able to measure. And of course, we need to follow through on that. We've already referenced discipline, so we need to trade it religiously and measure results for a specific strategy or set of strategies. Once we're in a position to do that, we can start to test parts of our plan and alternatives to it. And that then creates feedback to amend the plan accordingly. That's the process that we want to aim for. But without having measurement in place, this is just not going to happen. It's really that simple. So as we go through the next videos on various types of measurement, this is where we want you to get to. Now, one last slide in this introduction is look at the three essential measurement approaches. And we're going to discuss these through the next three videos. We've got macro measurement, which is all about your overall results and how we break those down into key numbers. Your micro measurement on behavioral performance and your micro measurement on system performance. Because it is these micro measurements that create your macro measurement or it's the things you do and how you do them that create your overall results. We'll see you in the next video.